ducks going through the muddy section here. Not too bad. I guess um, by the time 150 people have gone through there, it might be a bit more cut up. Because that's right, we do have about, I think there's 140 entrants. Not sure how many are going to be here in the race, but you know, over 100 people, quite a good field. My main goal for starting off is to not go too fast. However, I've still felt myself out in front, um, so see how that goes. But yeah, it's been nice and cruisy for this first um, hour. Hi, my name is John Chenge, and in this video, it's going to be a little bit different to usual. Um, things didn't go quite as well as what I expected, and um, I guess it's quite easy for me not to uh, post anything regarding that and just move on to the next one. But I think it's the kind of uh, content that um, people want to see in sport, realizing that sport is not just the highlight reel, there's a lot more that goes on. So, um, as per what I've done in previous uh, running events, I'll be checking in every hour and um, as the hours pass by I'll also include some post-race analysis uh, with this video. Let's get into it with my first ever recorded trail jump shot. A little bit more than two hours in, and uh, still just cruising through. It's generally rolling hills, mostly, well, it's steadily downhill for the way so far. Um, had Jared Allen, he's uh, using me to pace off, so he's just been cruising along behind me. So, two of us got a pretty good lead, and uh, yes, the sun is out, but. We're into a, a slight headwind, so it's nice and cool. Feels just like a uh, normal weekend training run so far, but yeah, still plenty of way to go. So mostly downhill for three hours so pace has been good but still it's enough to get the legs pretty tired and, and now um now's where there's a decent uphill for the next few k this part here bit of an uphill soft sand is nicer on the way north instead of going south Running through the field here is a lot of cows. 
some of them didn't move out of the way. These guys. Some of them standing their ground. Okay, so four hours in, and uh, you've done a lot of, a lot of climbing in the last hour. Um, I'm up to 48 k's, so yeah, the, the time really is blowing out. But uh, yeah, we're getting there. So uh, Jared and I are both very tired now, and it's it's really a fight keep going but the fact that we're not far off halfway and we're actually um, near the uh, I think we've gone up higher than the start point in the last and we've gone from the lowest point to higher, higher than the start point in the last hour it means that obviously pretty pretty tired but yeah getting there Get it done. Okay, so just coming up to five hours, almost five hours, and um, just going through the, the old uh, 60 kilometer start, which I did last year, 60k. And uh, yeah, this this hundred k business is is tough. Um, I've uh, yeah just completely blew to pieces uh, about I don't know, forty minutes ago. So I've been dropping a lot of time. Jared's yeah, he's going slow too, but he's pulling away comfortably, a good minute minute per kilometer at the moment. So uh, I'm just trying to see what I can do to enjoy it a bit just uh, yeah give the body a chance to recover by walking and jogging and yeah just keep ticking off the K's past halfway now so uh, five hours down my prediction is I'll probably do the next half in about seven hours this is a bit more hilly and I'm also going a lot slower because I've I've cooked myself but um, yeah this is a yeah it's a it's a challenge I, yeah, just a bit like the muscular contraction, the muscular soreness and everything was was getting to me before three hours, which is a bit un unusual for me. Um, so yeah, just the body wasn't quite as good as what it usually is come race day. But um, this is the seventh seventh marathon distance or further that I've done in seven months. Um, so yeah, and uh, so it looks like I, I didn't quite get the uh, the right recovery and uh, preparation for this one but you know still plenty of time it's only halfway still halfway to go and second place 
I'm not sure how far I am ahead of everyone else, probably quite a bit, but um, I'll, I'll need to get a move on if uh, I want to maintain maintain the place on the podium. Anyway, just going through um, some, uh, some paddocks now. This is where it starts to get quite hilly, so it's quite quite slow anyway for everyone. Um, these few grassy hills before going through Yulti. Anyway, I'll uh, check in a bit later. Now, seeing as this is my last uh, big race for the year, I will go through those six um, events that I uh, mentioned. So I started off with Karawira, which was my first 100k event. Big loop around Adelaide. And uh, usually after a big event uh, like that, I wouldn't, wouldn't race for at least a month, but I had the uh, Great Ocean Road Marathon roll over from 2020. So the borders were open, went over there and did it and got the win. Um, quite a big event that one. Then um, Pichi Richie Marathon, uh, which was the third time that I've got the win there. Uh, that was in June. Then um, had a bit of a break before uh, racing in August. Cape to Bay was a very technical um, event and took quite a bit of recovery time uh, to get myself right for Pangana. Uh, quite a steep event uh, two weeks after that. Then uh, Yorubilla, three weeks after that. Uh, took a lot out of me because I hadn't been training very much. And um, you can see that my uh, my fitness before Pichi Richi and before um, uh, Cape to Bay was was quite good. But then after that, I was just I was struggling because there was uh, struggling to get my training in and enough recovery to race. So by the time I came around to Hyson, it was um, you know there wasn't much fitness, and I was actually carrying quite a bit of fatigue uh, into the event. Okay, so got, still going through Yolti. Yeah, this is uh, this is pretty slow. Uh, I did a 19-minute kilometer, and yeah, it was, it was struggle to get up those hills. I, it's a it's hard to know whether to lean forward. You obviously want to lean forward to get up the hill, but then you lose a bit of grip, and I uh, almost almost fall back down the hill. Um, <laughs> but yeah, caught caught myself on some bushes. But yeah, it's uh, it's going slow. Um, I still, I still really want to get that sub 13 hours, which is uh, some sort of platinum medal or uh, belt buckle or something. So I'd really like to do that. So I'm gonna um, really, really you know, try to get into into some running when I can. But I'm just not trusting my uh, my legs on the uh, on the technical stuff because yeah, they're they're uh, super sore and not working too well at the moment but yeah almost out of out of your Okay, so I've just passed the aid station, uh, which is the 37k start, I believe. Um, I've been able to run a bit, so it's it's not the end. Um, getting a lot of uh, a lot of unusual sore spots, which are going to take a long time to rebuild afterwards. But yeah, no, we'll. Um, We'll get through. It's um yeah, comes and goes the how I'm feeling, but yeah, not not getting very far in each hour, but 37k to go sounds a lot better than 50, which it was a couple of hours ago, so. Yeah, we'll, um, let's keep at it. Okay, so I missed my 
eight hours check-in because it was a downhill I wanted to just focus on running even though I had to stop even on downhills I'd take some walk breaks um, looks like I misjudged the 37 I think the 37 was after my ponga so I um, ended up yeah, it's, most of the the seventh hour or the eighth hour was was in my ponga. Now it should be quicker because most of the running now is is on a smooth surface again instead of technical stuff. But I'm just I'm just completely gone. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's a bit over 30k to go still. Still haven't got to the Imam Valley Aid Station yet. Some of the um, some of the 5k people are gone gone past in steady streams of them. Um, I mean the 50k. Some of the 50k people are going gone past in steady stream for the past hour or two. But yeah, it's still in second place, but I'm not. It's, uh, I'm really considering not, not continuing past the next day station, but I will, um, yeah, I, I just got to keep, keep at it, I guess. No, it'll be, it'll be done eventually. I'm sure I'm at 8 hours 20, 20 into the run, expecting to be a lot further down, but Still, it's going to be really close whether I can go sub 13 because this last 32k is going to be you know, slow. It's going to be, yeah, it's, it's not, not going to be under four hours, I would, I would think. So, we'll see. Well, I don't know how you've uh, found it so far, but I've found that uh, fairly difficult to watch at times, but uh, also fairly uh, entertaining at times as well. Uh, what I'd like to go through is um, some of the, the mental strategies that I went through which were quite good and other ones which I didn't do so well on on the day and um, I guess the first one that I'd like to go through is setting goals uh, during the race for how you're going to execute the race. So for me it was a pace goal to start with, um, was my main one and then there was um, an effort goal that I had uh, towards the end. So very simple, um, trying not to make things too complicated, getting too detailed. Uh, it was just very simple goals, ones that I could um, easily get to. Because if you make them too, too complicated, then you know you, the brain not, isn't really working so well during the race. So it's better to have something really simple that you can um, uh, keep referring to. So I think I did that quite well by having those goals. Uh, pacing was another thing, another strategy that I looked at th throughout the run. And um, I think I paced that fairly well, even though I did blow to pieces. Uh, it was, you know, it was a good uh, minute per kilometre slower than the hilly marathons that I'd done um, uh, this year. So, uh, yeah, 325 for for the first marathon was it sounds fast, but yeah, it's quite a bit slower than what I could have done. So I think I paced that okay. It's just um, probably after that I pushed it a little bit too much. Um, on the uh, hill after the 70k start, uh, I sort of got into a bit of a groove and yeah, just uh, dug, dug a bit too deep on that hill where I should have been in conservation mode and just kept um, going, going quite easy uh, from there. So apart from that, a few other things that I implemented was taking the emotion out of the um, of the day was. Uh, treating like I was piloting a machine rather than how I'm feeling so much so more about okay we'll do this and that will create some sort of a result with the body so to try to distance yourself and take the emotion out of it and just do the execution part is important and another thing that uh, I did quite well during the run was I um, had secondary goals so although I had my main goal uh, slipped by the wayside which was you know um, sub 10 hour finish I had secondary goals, so finish on the podium, finish sub 13 hours. So um, again, that's 
a good strategy to, you know, if, you, if it seems like things aren't going so well, it's like, okay, well, I can refocus on this and I can probably keep going and do that, um, achieve that goal. So, um, yeah, it's important to have those secondary goals um, and that's, that's something I, I did quite well. Also, what I put in there was some um, positive mantras. So it's saying things like getting it done or getting there. Just little things you can say to yourself, um, little positive things you can say to yourself as, as you're going through. Uh, there may be something about you personally that you'd say, like, you know, you're, I'm flying or I'm a gun or, or whatever is, is another one that I, that I like to use. But um, yeah, for, for on the day it was uh, mostly just those, you know, getting it done and we're getting there. Um, so little positive things to say. And also, if the mind does turn negative, is also there's always something positive that you can find. So I was always just thinking, yeah, well, at least this hasn't happened, or at least I'm still going you know, in this way. So um, I was finding finding something always positive. Another thing you saw just before the last update was the concentration. Running hard does require a lot of concentration. And although I do take the time every hour to check in and, and reevaluate how I'm going, to run really well, you need to really concentrate on what you're doing. So um, you're having that focus and uh, it's disassociating, I find, never gets me a very good performance. It's all about um, trying to do, do what I can to manage the different parts of my body that need to, need to be managed. You know, managing stress, uh, managing effort, um, all of these things take a lot of concentration, you know, knowing which way to go and so on. And so to get the best performance, you really do need to um, concentrate. And I guess that's what uh, a lot of the training um, does is to force you to concentrate. Now, another few things that I noticed that I didn't, wasn't doing so well was that I was kept reminding myself on how far it was to go. And that really doesn't help um, so much. It can be quite a negative thing if you think about how far you've got to go. So, um, I mean, it, it's, I guess it's useful for the vlog to let people know what's happening, but um, when, when you're in, in an event, it is more about just managing what you've got in the moment, what you can do in the moment, rather than thinking about, oh, I've got so much more to go. So that's not one thing that I'll need to work on. And another thing is how I'm feeling. Um, it's not good to have uh, constant feedback on how I'm, you know, if, if someone asks how I'm feeling and I want to give a, a, uh, a realistic response, it'll usually be, I'm feeling rubbish. Um, to get your best performance, you really need to turn off the emotion and think about the execution. Another thing I didn't do so well was um, comparing myself with others. I know that part of the race is doing a race to have other people around you so you can lift your performance, but um, if you're comparing yourself saying I'm going really bad compared to the person who's going really good, then that's not going to help you. If you can uh, find something positive in, in the way that they're going and then that's creating something positive for you, then that's great. Um, so that's again another thing I'll need to work on is comparing with others, uh, try to think of that as more of a um, seeing it in a positive way rather than yeah they're going really well and I'm not going so well. Anyway, uh, I'll uh, do a bit more of a um, follow-up uh, after the next uh, section but uh, yeah that's uh, that's my feedback on how things have gone so far. Okay so I've um, given it some more thought and I um, haven't been able to run for a couple k's now and uh, I think uh, I think I need to stop because I'm just incredibly sore, and I um, yeah I've got a hundred I've got a hundred k race booked in in, four, in uh, three and a half months, and I am already going to be taking quite a long time to recover, and I think if I'm out there for another six hours which i know there's a lot of people that that do this race and they you know they'd be they'd, be, they'd love to finish in 15 hours but um yeah but i don't think they'd, they'd be as sore as i am at this stage or as i was three hours ago so um yeah i gave it a go i tried to uh get going again tried to uh yeah tried a few different things so yeah stopped and refueled at aid stations i, I was taking in everything it's just yeah i've got got a um a, a very sore shin uh, i've got knees i've got 
quads, uh, everything's just, yeah, the body's not reacting very well at all to today's run. Um, so. Yeah, so, um, yeah, signing off and uh, we'll, uh, hopefully impress next time. So that's my Hyson for 2021. A uh, bit more reflecting on uh, on that uh, result on the um, on the day. I um, I guess I was thinking a lot more about the six consecutive wins that I'd done, and I wasn't thinking about how in every single one of them I'd also come to a point where things had become really hard and I'd considered um, stopping, uh, considered pulling out. So I should have probably referred to to that and said, "You're you've been you've been in, uh, in this sort of um, space before." Um, and uh, and that might have that might have turned things around, but regardless, it was still the second longest run I've ever done, uh, both in time and uh, distance. So um, I guess that's that's worth celebrating to, to being being one of my biggest runs ever. Um, even though yeah, I didn't get to the finish line. But uh, yes, coming up, as I mentioned, I've got um, a big race coming up in uh, three and a half months, so 15 weeks, and. Um, yeah, I think I'll do quite well in that just for the fact that I'll um, schedule my um, my racing and training uh, much better, not have a whole lot of uh, races booking to, together like, like they did before Heisen. So that will help a bit. But I'm also, yeah, really keen to, to do well. So what I'm planning on doing is a series of training vlogs where um, I check in each week uh, with what I'm doing with my training. There's going to be quite a bit of variation in uh, the sessions and how I approach different uh, aspects of my life uh, through through this period. Um, but yes, uh, looking forward to, to uh, getting into that training and uh, and then getting to race day. And uh, feel free to subscribe uh, so you can get all the latest updates. Uh, but uh, thanks for watching and I'll hopefully see you out there sometime. Here he comes, 30 meters to go, you're 20.